Thank you for joining us today in Jennifer Schaus and Associates complimentary webinar series. We're coming to you live from Washington, D.C. today. This year on Fridays, we're covering procurement playbooks. We take a deep dive into doing business with the federal agencies and departments with our panelists. On Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, we cover the FAR supplements or procurement regulations for the agencies and departments. And then Fridays, we cover business development and marketing aspects of the same agency and departments. The full schedule and sign up links, as well as the recordings, are on our website. And here's just a look at what we've covered so far in our FAR supplement series. As you can see, we only have two left. And then here's a look at our Friday schedule. Um, and our last Friday webinar will be on the 26th of this month. All right, and please join us. We have added just another um, procurement playbook webinar, but it's not on a Friday this time. It's doing business with NSA. This will be a live webinar only, and we will not be recording this webinar, um, and the slides are not available afterwards. So don't miss this rare opportunity to participate. And as well, the government speaker will be taking audience questions during this webinar. So we really hope that you can attend. Um, you can find the registration link on our website. And please join us for our specialty webinar series covering executive orders in House and Senate committees and how they impact federal contractors. These complimentary webinars will be recorded and the registration links are within the slides and they'll be sent out after today's webinar. And then please note that this fall we will be starting a new webinar series covering subcontracting opportunities in the different government departments these webinars will be on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, and they begin September 7th with the Department of Agriculture. And now we'd like to thank our sponsors who help make this webinar series possible. First, we'd like to thank the Virginia PTAC. Virginia PTAC is based out of GMU in Fairfax and offers free one-on-one -on -one counseling to firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on business location. If you're interested in learning more, please use the links provided to explore what PTACs can offer. And a special thanks to the Federal Business Council. The FBC creates and manages virtual and in-person meetings and events to connect industry and government thought leaders, product providers, and solutions with government programs that use them. The FBC works with a variety of federal agencies to connect government and industry in the form of in-person and virtual conferences, training events, policy dialogue, and outreach. Over the last 40 plus years, FBC has become a comprehensive resource for connecting industry and the federal government. And next, we'd like to thank Dastin. Dastin is an IT and cloud solutions provider working with corporations, the military, and government agencies to lower their costs, increase scalability, improve operational efficiency, and meet compliance regulations using targeted cloud-based solutions. Dastin is a certified partner of Oracle NetSuite, a premier tier Google Cloud partner, and certified partner of Cisco, Virtue, AO Docs, and Authenticate. For more information about Dastin services or to schedule a complimentary consultation, please email Joe Alston or visit the Dastin website. Next, we'd like to thank C3. C3 ISIT develops tailor-made technology solutions that increase efficiency, bolster productivity, and improve business processes. C3 is the leading provider of managed IT services as well as compliant cybersecurity solutions for federal contractors. C3 works with defense contractors to achieve and maintain CMMC 2.0, DFARS, and NIST 800-171. Contact C3 to learn more about the CMMC 2.0 readiness program. The contact information is on your screen. Next, we'd like to thank RLJ Financial. Founded in 2008, RLJ Financial Consultants is a customer-focused, quality-driven, minority and locally owned provider of commercial insurance brokerage services. Their services are designed to maximize your return on investment and in managing the risk to your business. Call Roderick today at 202-832-1417 for a free consultation and insurance quote. 
And lastly, we'd like to thank the PubK Group. The PubK Group publishes news and insights for government contractors, agencies, and council. Every day, PubK delivers news on bid protests, contract disputes, new laws and regulations, cybersecurity requirements, false claims act activity, and developments in mergers and acquisitions in the GovCon community. In daily news briefs and in-depth conversations and podcasts and webinars, PubK leverages its deep bench of government contract experts to keep you up to date on fast-changing government rules and expectations. And every January, PubK presents its week-long annual review, featuring more than 50 GovCon experts across a dozen panels, recapping the year's top developments. Participation and CLEs are free to subscribers. Visit PubK online at www.pubkgroup.com. All right, and today we are covering doing business with NRC. So let's meet our panelists. First, we want to thank our friends from FedMine. Um, Ms. Archisa Meehan is with us as always. Um, it's great to have you with us. It's really nice to be here today um, with uh, our friends from uh, NRC. And as Archisa just mentioned, um, we have a few representatives um, from the small business office at NRC. So we have Mr. Anthony Briggs with us, as well as Diane Saint and Tara Patterson. It's great to have you all with us today. Thank you. It's great to be here as well and, and reconnect uh, with FedMind, who we haven't spoken to in a while. So thank you very much for this opportunity. All right. And with that, um, I'm going to let Archisa take over um, and give us the data perspective. So I'm going to put myself on mute now. Thank you, Madeline. Um, so for those who don't know me, my name is Archisha Meehan. I am the director of federal at GovSpan. Um, Go to market, federal go to market. Um, and I come from FedMine. So FedMine was really founded way back in 2004. It's a federal business intelligence platform that basically integrates the various uh, 18 data sets on federal procurement into one easy to use solution. Um, with our acquisition by GovSpend, we now provide uh, both federal and state and local data. So let's go to the next slide. Um, this is just a quick look at our data sets and then the next slide. So let's talk about uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission or NRC. Um, I always, as you all know, that I'm always going to tell you to look at an agency, look at the mission, what are they doing, um, look at their strategic plans as you plan to either grow in an agency or enter the agency. In this case, um, the mission is pretty simple. It sounds simple, but I know it's not. It licenses and regulates the nation's use of radioactive materials to provide reasonable assurance of adequate protection of public health and safety and to promote the common defense and security to protect the environment. The mission says a lot of um, things, uh, and you know, I think it's all, and this will be reflected in the spending and the opportunities and the budget. So let's go on to the next slide. Um, so things that they focus on, the reactors, which the commercial reactors that are used for generating electric power and research and test the reactors that are used for research testing and training. Uh, the materials, the use of the nuclear materials, including that in the medical, industrial and academic settings and the facilities that produce the nuclear fuel. And then, of course, the waste, which includes the transportation, storage, and disposal of the nuclear materials and waste, including the decommissioning of the nuclear facilities from service. So this sort of is a quick look at what they do, um, though I know we learn a lot more from uh, Mr. Briggs and his team. Uh, but this is just to give you a quick look before we get more into the data. So uh, let's go. The other thing that I actually found pretty interesting was, as I was doing my research, was that it was really created as an independent agency by Congress in 1974, um, you know, to benefit the civilian purposes while protecting people and environment. Um, you know, so so I, I find that, you know, going back and trying to understand the history for me is always interesting. So I found that pretty interesting. Um, so let's go to the next slide. Quick look at how the how NRC has awarded the contracts. This is by 
um, you know, by contracting office, not by funding office. If we do funding office, the numbers will be a little different. But for the purposes of the numbers that are being presented today, it's based on contracting office. So, um, you know, last year they did $162 million. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, the $162 million were awarded to 423 companies with Lidos, Tech, Synap, CGI, Oasis, all being the top companies, um, including Southwest Research Institute, uh, Verizon Business Network Services. So this is just a quick look at all the total spend. Let's go to the next slide. In terms of the NAICS codes, um, definitely computer-related services, uh, administrative management NAICS codes, uh, scientific and technical consulting type of NAICS codes are all part of the top NAICS uh, that um, NRC has been uh, awarding contracts under. I always think it's really important to pay attention on the PSC codes too, because many times they provide a lot more detail. And of course, as all of you know, we always want to make sure that we are tracking, uh, you know, understanding the spend and the NAICS codes based on the type of work we do. Using keywords is always, always helpful. So next slide. Um, in terms of the contracts awarded by place of performance, um, you know, we have Maryland, D.C., Virginia, Texas, Pennsylvania as your top states. Um, in terms of companies by headquarters, little inverted there, where we have Virginia, Maryland as the top two, followed by um, Texas and Massachusetts and California. So it's always interesting, and you know we really need to understand even the place of performance, especially when we overlay our keywords to see where, what is happening at which facility. It gives us that level of transparency quickly. Uh, next slide. In terms of contracts awarded to small business, um, NRC, so Mr. Briggs and his team have done an amazing job of awarding more than 50% as small business contracts. This was awarded to 257 companies, um, so that is amazing. Uh, we don't see that that often. Um, so let's let's go to the next slide. Uh, looking at your top companies, again, we see some of the same ones. So Tech, Tech Sign App, Northram, AgisNet, Centiva are all some of the top small businesses at NRC. And if you look at the sole sources, the type of set-asides that are being used, you again see a really good mix of, um, you know, the various uh, socioeconomic categories, including the 8As, the SDVOSBs, the hub zones, and the women-owned small businesses. So again, it's always nice to see a really good mix of how the set-asides are also being used. Um, next slide. Um, looking at your NAICS codes, again, more pretty similar to what we saw uh, when we looked at the total NAICS code, but you do have a couple of other ones here, including facility support services. Um, however, when you look at the PSC codes, they are pretty different from what we saw, um, not pretty, but a little different from what we saw for the total agencies, which is why I'm always gonna say, pay attention to the PSC codes too. Um, it, it sometimes gives us a lot more um, detail of what it, what it is. Um, next slide. Um, so again, uh, when we look at contracts and how things have been awarded, we always paying attention also to seeing, you know, with the pandemic, how has that affected an agency's spend? Um, so in FY20, um, NRC awarded a little more than $6 million on, under the COVID-19 um, National Interest Action Code to 12 companies. And all of these contracts were awarded as small business. So again, uh, just to put that in perspective, it's always good to see and understand how our um, you know spend is for um, for the COVID NIA code. Um, next slide. Um, and then you know I'm always going to start tell you to let's look at categories. Um, you know, categories are really based on GSA's category management. It comes from the PSC, you know, it's, it's an amalgamation of all the PSC codes. 
uh, in terms of your top categories, again, this definitely ties in with some of the next codes that we saw. Um, you know, IT, professional services, uh, human capital, are all your top categories. Uh, and again, you know, you could see how uh, the contracts are going to small versus other than small uh, businesses. And that really ties into uh, the agency's 50 odd percent that it awards as small business contracts. So uh, that is NRCs by category. Let's go to the next slide and um, look at the contracts. Oh, I made a mistake. Sorry. Um, let's go to the next slide. I might have to fix this one, Madeline. Uh, so let's look at the subcontracts um, for NRC uh, that have been reported. Now, the subcontract data comes from USA spending, which gets its data from FSRS. So really, it depends on the primes or subs that might report this data. But for FY21, we have about $22 million that were reported as subcontracts by seven primes to more to 34 companies. The NAICS codes are all in the computer-related NAICS code for the most part. Next slide. The top primes in this case are CGI, ASRC, LIDOS, OSS, TechSmith, Synap, ActionNet, and Arctic Slope Regional. And in terms of the top sub awardees, uh, we have a mix of um, SAIC, ICF, uh, you know, super systems, human touch. And again, this will change based on your, as you filter the results or you want to just see results based on the type of work you do, whether you put in keywords or X codes. So always keep that in mind while this is at the top level, the results will really change as we filter in and start focusing in more on what you do. Uh, so next slide. Um, while we typically are always looking at contracts, I think in some cases, it's also important to pay attention to the grants data that is out there. Um, you know, and this is just showing you a quick look at the grants that have been awarded by NRC. Last year, they were at about $60 million. So again, it's also important as, you know, to, to not forget the grants database. Um, so next slide. Uh, so that really was looking at trends and, you know, what's happening in terms of the spending, um, always overlaying it based on what NRC does, always filtering results more by, you know, your the type of work that you as a small business specifically do, uh, because all of that sort of ties into understanding an agency and seeing if there is an opportunity for you at that agency. Uh, so that sort of takes us into opportunities. Um, so when we talk about opportunities, you know, it's like, what is an opportunity? And truly, you know, you have new opportunities that are gonna be based on new initiatives, uh, you know, that's really gonna come on uh, from the budget, from the agency's uh, strategic plan. And again, NRC has done an amazing job of, uh, you know, their budget documents and the strategic plans. Uh, there's a lot of information and I'm always telling people that we should never forget what is out there because that is where we will see things like the new initiatives that are going to be funded because that's going to create a new need, new opportunities, especially if you are able to provide that service to the agency. The other thing that is always important is to look at contracts that could possibly be recompeted. Um, again, when we are looking at contracts that could be recompeted, uh, fine tuning it based on the various keywords and socioeconomic categories, again, is super important. So, where do you get all of this information? Definitely the budget uh, and strategic plan gives you a lot of information. Um, oh, and we will talk that talk about it a little bit, but you should also pay attention to all the, ex, the Exhibit 53s and 300s, especially if you're in the technology industry. Pay attention to the pre-solicitations and source of sort notices that are in SAM.gov at the agency level. And then of course, creating expiring contract searches uh, you know, based on what you do, if you if you see that the agency is using specific IDIQs and GVACs, look at and you have those vehicles, 
pay attention to that and look at the task orders that could be expiring on those specific vehicles. So let's go to the next slide. So let's look at your Exhibit 53s. This is really looking at the major IT programs and projects that are at an agency. And it sort of tells you a little bit of what it is and you know what is the funding for each of these major ID projects. So if you are in the IT industry, I would definitely tell you to pay attention and look at all the projects that have been funded. What are the trends? Uh, you know, is it going up? Is it going down? Is it steady? Who's who's won the contracts? And get into that understanding. Um, next slide which sort of leads me into the Exhibit 300s, which I really like because they give you a lot more information about you know, a, a specific uh, program in that agency and how is it doing. And many times you'll actually find the program manager's name. So uh, again, a lot of good information within the Exhibit 53s and 300s, especially if you are in the IT industry. Uh, next slide. So we did talk about the fact that, you know, we should also pay attention to the contracts that are expiring over the next 12, 24 months. Um, these are opportunities that could be recompeted. They, and, to, and we really want to be looking ahead and seeing what could possibly be some opportunities that we want to focus on, that we want to create relationships with, whether we want to do that with the existing incumbent or um, you know, talking with um, the agencies and um, getting a better understanding. Um, so looking at that, you know, when I'm looking at contracts awarded as, as other than small business, I have more than $200 million worth of contracts. Um, and as you can see, a um, lot of these contracts are with CGI Federal, Lidos, and Oasis. So um, let's go to the, and Southwest Research Institute, of course. Um, and then also when you start looking at the contracts that are expiring, you know, again, just showing you quickly, you know, the top place of performance, which really ties in overall with NRC's top place of performance, but also look at the top NAICS codes and see what are the various NAICS codes that are where the contracts are expiring. Um, again, please use your keywords, your filters, because that's really going to change the results and get it more focused towards what you do. So next slide. So let's look at the contracts that are expiring as small business over the next 12 months, more than $176 million. And again, you know, a lot of these could be contracts that are not going to be recompeted. It's possible they were awarded to do a major project that's over and now the maintenance might be, it might be more a matter of maintenance. So those are things that you really need to understand as your focusing and getting into an industry. Uh, so next slide. So looking at your small business expiring contracts, um, you know, computer related NAICS codes, uh, facility supports, uh, and professional services, all of that are part of your top NAICS codes that are expiring. In terms of the set of sites used, again, very similar to what we saw for the agency as a whole. Uh, for small business contracts in terms of 8A, um, women-owned and HUBZone and SDVOSP type of uh, set of sites that are being used. If you are an 8A, um, if you are a relatively new 8A, pay attention on those sole source contracts or 8A contracts that are expiring where the incumbent is also expiring where the incumbent's 8A is also expiring, these could be good opportunities for you to create um, relationships with the existing incumbent. So next slide. Uh, so in terms of opportunities, uh, this is coming straight from sam.gov and is showing you uh, the open opportunities uh, that are out there. You could see a lot of sources, sort notices, pre-solicitation, special notices. Pay attention to them, respond to them. Uh, this is most, you know, typically the agency's way of doing market research. Um, so this is, and then um, I didn't have a slide, but I'm going to recommend all of you that go and look at the budget go and look at the strategic plan. If NRC is an agency that you want to focus on, please, please, please make sure you go through those documents 
there is a lot of important information. And I think when we do this exercise of understanding what, what does NRC do? What are the type of products and services they purchase? How are they purchasing? What is What could be coming up? and understand their budget, it sort of allows us to take a more educated, uh, it gives us that intelligence that we need to take the actions, to grow within an agency, to have our conversations with our um, agency advocates. So having said that, I, I think we are now ready to hear from uh, Mr. Briggs and his team. All right. Hello, everybody. Let me just say that was an excellent um, overview of the agency's data, trends, and spending. So I really appreciate it. Believe it or not, learned a few things, even uh, diving into the data as deep as I normally do um, at the agency. But again, I want to introduce myself and my team. Uh, my name is Anthony Briggs. I'm the Small Business Program Manager at the NRC. Uh, if Tira is on, I would love Tira to introduce herself briefly. Good uh, afternoon. I'm Tira Patterson. I'm the Senior Small Business Specialist here at the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, again, I also echo Tony's uh, comments that that was a very impressive uh, presentation, and really good information. And a lot of the information that makes our lives a lot easier and um, helps us to help you. So uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Tony. Thanks. All right. Absolutely. And well said. Uh, Diane, do you mind introducing yourself briefly as well? Oh, sure. I'm Diane Saint. I provide support to the Small Business Program. Thank you for that information, too. That makes our lives easier, like Tara said, and uh, we will always refer to your numbers as proof that the agency does and do recommend small businesses first for our, our procurement. All right. Well said, Diane. And uh, we can jump to uh, the next slide so we can jump into uh, my portion of the presentation. Uh, so a little bit about the Small Business Office and the role we play at the agency to help small businesses expand their footprint into the federal marketplace. Our role focuses on three key ingredients to assist you in those efforts, which are learn, navigate, and advocate. The Small Business Office really represents the doorway for small businesses to learn how to conduct business with the NRC, and that's how I really want you to think of us. So that's the learn ingredient. Uh, next is the navigate. So we have found that the most common barrier to securing federal contract opportunities is where to start and who can help you navigate the federal procurement process. And that is where we come into play. We really are here to help you along that process. And then finally is the advocate role. We also advocate that all acquisition decisions consider how they can maximize small business opportunities, which is something we routinely help our agency buyers with when purchasing products and or services in support of agency operations. And I think the previous slide has shown um, over 50% of our spending to small businesses is, is proof of that. All right, let's move to the uh, next slide. And uh, let's talk a little bit about our forecast. Uh, our forecast is where we project not only what we plan on purchasing for the current fiscal year, but we also include a current active contracts listing. Uh, therefore, our forecast is broken into two parts. Part one contains opportunities for the current fiscal year, and part two is a current contract listing. So in the event you do not see any relevant opportunities for the current fiscal year, you can look for following opportunities up to five years out, as well as identify potential subcontracting opportunities. Now, part two is going to be organized according to the NAICS code, and it contains a brief uh, description of the requirement, what company the contract was awarded to, for how much, when the contract expires, and the contract number, which you can use to view an online copy of the contract, which I'll touch on a little later in the presentation. I also want to mention that we are in the process of making the forecast more interactive and searchable, so please stay tuned for that. Now let's talk about a few small business prime uh, contract opportunities we are currently performing market research for uh, agency buyers. And I do want to mention that 
the small business program at the NRC is positioned a little differently uh, than maybe some other uh, federal small business offices. We've positioned ourselves to be the easy button when the agency has a product and or service need. So that buyer and contracting officer can, you know, quote unquote, hit that easy button. And we'll come in and assist them with market research by finding the companies, vetting the companies, exploring viable contract vehicles, scheduling and hosting virtual capability presentations, information gathering sessions, as well as uh, facilitating site tours. But some opportunities we're working on uh, currently include managed print services, application modernization, that's a new opportunity, uh, operations and maintenance for our video teleconference centers and communication rooms, competency modeling, personal security support, and agency recruitment and retention integrated marketing services. Now, with respect to subcontracting, uh, we have a $679 million multiple award acquisition that requires any large business that wins an award to subcontract out 40% of the total value of that order to small businesses. And we are planning on recompeting the IT help desk support opportunity and issuing new operations and maintenance orders for a few of our high visibility IT applications uh, next fiscal year. So they represent a great opportunity uh, for subcontracting. All right, let's take a look at uh, the scorecard next. We have a link to our scorecard, and we're happy to announce that SBA just released our fiscal year 2021 scorecard, and our grade improved from an A to an A+. Uh, there were 10 other agencies that received an A-plus for fiscal year 2021 achievements. And if you were to take a look at our overall numerical score, we actually ranked third among our federal counterparts for small business performance. But there's two things I also want to mention about the SBA scorecards. First, the scorecards grade an agency small business performance, which is measured against prime and subcontract goals, as well as the activities performed by the small business office. So for many small businesses, they represent a litmus test to gauge the small business friendliness of a particular agency. Now, with that said, uh, the agencies we speak to and routinely work with are doing everything they can to achieve the small business goals that they fail to meet, which brings me to my next point. Um, second, the scorecards do, in a way, present a marketing opportunity for you uh, with respect to your small business certification status as it relates to an agency's small business goals. Quite a few small businesses that we have uh, spoken to have had success with targeting their marketing efforts towards agencies that have failed to meet one or more of that small business's uh, certifications. Because agencies have goals for small businesses, small disadvantaged businesses, women-owned, service-disabled veteran-owned, and companies located in historically underutilized business zones, as we saw earlier. Uh, with that said, you should always lead with your strongest asset, which is your capability to support an agency's product and or service needs, and how you can add value to that organization. All right, let's move to the next slide. Uh, a little bit about our industry days and kind of what we do with respect to outreach. Um, regarding agency small business events, we've moved from in-person to virtual small business events that we host uh, about two times each year. And we focus on a different topic and different audience uh, each time. For example, this fiscal year, we focused one event on 8A businesses and how they can capture their first federal government contract. And we had breakout sessions titled uh, such as, I'm 8A certified, now what? And we had speakers from SBA and a few 8A companies that were uh, successful graduates or current 8A businesses, and one actually included the Small Business of the Year winner. Uh, another event focused on subcontracting and included one-on-one -on -one contract connection sessions where small businesses were able to meet with agency prime contractors to discuss subcontracting opportunities. Uh, again, each event is different, and we try to focus on important and relevant topics that affect the small business uh, marketplace. 
information on future NRC small business events, as well as other events you may find beneficial to your business development needs, can be found under our Calendar of Events tab in our Small Business Toolbox. Uh, the Toolbox link can be found on the earlier slide titled Links to the Small Business Office. And this toolbox is located on our office's public website, which you can also visit by simply Googling NRC Small Business and it's the first result at the very top. So keep an eye on it, and we should be updating uh, a few virtual events that we're currently working on uh, as we speak. So now let's jump into the best practices, if we can, on the next slide. <clears throat> so taking a look at some of the best practices uh, we use uh, to help companies secure an agency contract, we provide four key services to support you in your efforts to secure a federal contract and grow your business. Uh, first, we provide free one-on-one -on -one virtual counseling sessions. The counseling sessions include matching your company's capabilities with prime and subcontract opportunities, viewing actual copies of agency contracts in real time using a new, unique feature that we have. And we'll cover how to use the resources we have in place, like our small business toolbox we just uh, took a look at in the previous slide. Uh, second is marketing, because a common question we receive is, how can my company market its products or services to the agency for items that are new, meaning we have no current contracts in place? For products and services that are innovative and new to us, we can record virtual demos and uh, MS Teams that will be featured on an agency innovation channel to showcase such products and services for agency officials to view on demand. Third, we have designed resources like our small business toolbox to help you effectively and efficiently identify prime and subcontract opportunities. Uh, we'll also show you one of the most powerful tools we have at helping you secure a contract. Uh, we actually give you access to the majority of our contracts instantly online, and I mean the entire contract, including the statement of work, uh, without the need to submit a FOIA request. Uh, access to agency contracts gives you the ability to gauge your company's capabilities, effectively market, and build a team to enhance your capabilities and build upon your proposed solution. And then fourth, we also have a dedicated help desk support where you can ask any questions you may have outside of the counseling sessions such as requesting a counseling session or a follow-up session, seeking guidance on how to use any of the resources we have available, or simply asking us what we buy. And the, the real takeaway here is that you are never alone in your pursuits, and we have a dedicated person available to help you with any questions you may have. All right, let's take a look at the uh, <clears throat> next slide here. So the real focus, the reason we put it in first place, uh, the counseling sessions I'm referring to is because how important they are and how they really kind of drive um, your business development activity at the agency. So I want to mention just a few ways you can prepare for the counseling sessions. Since, as I mentioned, there's typically the starting point to ensure. I want to make sure they're infected, uh, very effective and represent time well spent for you. Uh, we know that time is precious to many small business owners because you typically wear multiple hats and time is definitely money uh, in this business. So let's take a look at them. First, uh, just be prepared to summarize your expertise and experience and not just federal work, but anything relevant um, to what we purchase. And second, uh, review the forecast to identify any opportunities that match your company's capabilities. That way we can pull a copy of a particular contract together just to review the tasks, deliverables, and qualifications needed to successfully perform that contract. Third, um, I would have a capability statement ready to share so we can place it in our SharePoint directory that is searchable and used for agency market research efforts. And then fourth, I'd recommend that you attend via the computer, if you can. As I know things come up that are outside of, uh, of your control, uh, I still would highly recommend attending uh, through your computer, not phone, because there will be occasions where we share our screen to walk you through a process or a particular contract opportunity. 
All right, so let's jump how you can kind of start the conversation with us and contact us to discuss any opportunities we have on the next slide. Um, <clears throat> so in order to utilize any of the best practices, we suggest you reach out to us today to really get the conversation started. And we have three ways you can contact us to request a counseling session or ask any questions you may have. First, we have a dedicated email account. Uh, however, please understand that we typically receive a high volume of requests after we participate in, in events such as today. So your patience is, is greatly appreciated as we manage the increased number of requests that typically follow. Um, second is a phone number that is answered by our help desk support person, Diane. Uh, she's available to help you answer any questions and provide some helpful guidance to you. And then third is our public uh, web page. Uh, this contains a request a counseling session button to request a counseling session. It's at the very bottom of the page. And we provided here a link to our public web page so you can request a counseling session with us. Uh, one request we do have is that when you request a counseling session, please put in the email subject line JS counseling request, so we know that today's event uh, sent you to us. And with that said, I want to thank you very much for listening and taking time out of your busy schedules to learn a little more about my agency. I uh, wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors, and we look forward to speaking with you. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Anthony and your team, um, for speaking with us today. That was a lot of great information. So thank you again to our panel, um, Anthony, Diane, and Tira, as well as um, Archisa for being with us. Um, as they said, their contact information was in the slides, so that'll be sent out um, later today. Um, and the recording and slides will be available within the next 24 hours. And remember, next week, we look forward to seeing you as we dig into the Department of Transportation. So the FAR supplement will be on Wednesday um, and the corresponding playbook on Friday. And as always, the registration links are on our website. So thank you, everyone, for attending today. Have a great day and a great weekend. And this concludes the webinar.